first welcome to the course on understanding gender in law we have we, today we will discuss the indian legal system so in, in indian legal system we have already discussed on the concept of constitution how the constitution was derived today we will focus on the legislature the indian legal system the organs of government in indian legal system are divided into three segments or branches which is which are the legislature the executive the judiciary now the legislature forms law and procedures along with examining the administration and its resolutions the executive is the organ that implements the law enacted by the legislature and enforces the will of the state judiciary is that branch of the government that interprets the law settles dispute and administers justice to all its citizens now india has federal system and follows a parliamentary form of government federal system means that there is a union government at center and state government in every state now the union parliament if we talk about is situated in new delhi while the state assemblies are situated in the capital cities of respective states the union parliament is bicameral there are two houses uh, the lower house is known as lok sabha house of people and the representative to this house are directly elected by the people there is one representative for every 15 to 30 lakh voters Lok Sabha constituencies are larger than state assembly constituencies. Lok Sabha is chaired by the speaker, the party or the coalition having majority seats in Lok Sabha forms the government at the union. The majority members choose one among them as the prime minister. So prime minister along with the cabinet takes important decisions for the country. So Lok Sabha has 543 seats as on date. The upper house is also known as Rajya Sabha or a council of states the member to Rajya Sabha are elected indirectly out of 245 members 233 are selected or elected from the state legislatures and union territories through a process which is known as single transferable vote now the remaining 12, 12 members are appointed by president from the field of art literature science and social services the state assemblies if we talk about them the state assemblies they are also referred to as a state legislatures in each state some state assemblies have two houses while some have a single house for instance karnataka has two houses while jharkhand has a single house the members of state assemblies are called the members of legislative assemblies these members are elected directly by the people the assembly constituencies are smaller than parliamentary constituencies the number of members in each state assembly however varies on the basis of the population and the geography the state assemblies they make pa they make pass bills and get the assent of the governor now basic what are the basic functions of legislature so we have discussed it it's a, like in india we have a bicameral structure we have a parliamentary form of government where a union parliament and the state assemblies are there so what is the basic functions functions of legislature the foremost function is making the laws the chief function is the of the legislative body is to enact laws the legislature not only enacts the new laws but it also abolishes old and vexatious laws the law making process in india is distributed between the union parliament and the state legislatures the article 246 of the constitution provides for three lists namely union list state list and concurrent list Union list consists of important subjects like defense, atomic energy, war, citizenship, and so on. Laws relating to these subjects can be made only by union parliament. State list has subjects like agriculture, health, law, and order, and so on. Laws relating to these subjects can be made only by state assemblies. Laws relating to the subjects in concurrent list. it can be made by both union parliament and state assemblies now union parliament first introduces how it makes uh, make law so union parliament first introduces a proposed new law or a amendment as a bill and such bill when passed through the lok sabha then by rajya sabha it becomes the act such acts come into force once assented by the president 
the procedure relating to passing of laws in union parliament are given in article 107 to 117 of the constitution and the law made by par union parliament are referred to as the central acts and are applicable across the whole of India. The law making procedure of the state assemblies however is given under article 196 to 207 of constitution. The law made the state assemblies are the laws which is made by the state assemblies are applicable within the territory of that state and not beyond them. In the case of concurrent list where the state legislatures and the parliament have you know joint jurisdiction the union law will prevail over the state unless the state law had received the earlier presidential assent. However, the parliament can any time enact a law adding to, amending, varying or repealing a law which is made by a state legislature. The parliament can also pass laws on items in the state list under the following circumstances like emergency is in operation or any state is placed under president rule article 356. The parliament can enact laws on the items in the state list as well. So, as per article 249, the parliament can make laws on the items in the state list if the Rajya Sabha passes a resolution by two third majority of its member present and voting. That it is necessary for the parliament to make laws on any items enumerated in the state list in the national interest. In these circumstances, they can, uh, the, uh, the parliament can make laws even on the state list. The article 253, it says uh, it can pass laws on the state list items if it is required for implementation of internal international agreements or treaties with the foreign power. So, if it is governing the international treaties or a foreigner power, so it can then, then also the center can pass the law on a state list. According to article 252, if the legislatures of two or more states, they pass the resolution to the effect that it is desirable to have a parliamentary law on any item which is listed in the state list which is a subject of a state list. The parliament can also make laws for these, those states because this is decided by the legislature of those states they can pass a resolution to that effect. Now, uh, so far it is not only the law making function there are many functions which the legislature is, organ, uh, is uh, you know functioning. For example, executive functions control over the executive. In the parliamentary form of government, the executive is responsible to the legislature. Hence, the parliament exercises control over the executive by several measures. Uh, for example, by vote of confidence, the parliament can remove the cabinet, executive out of power, it can reject a budget proposal or any other bill which is brought by the cabinet. A motion of no confidence is passed to remove a government from office. The MPs, the members of parliament, they can ask questions to the ministers on their omissions and commissions. Any lapses on the part of government can be exposed in the parliament. Then adjournment motions, it allowed only in the Lok Sabha. The chief objective of the adjournment motion is to draw the attention of parliaments to any recent issues of urgent public interest. It is considered as an extraordinary tool in parliament as the normal business is basically you know affected when the uh, adjournment motions are used. The parliament appoints a committee on ministerial assurances that sees whether the promises which is made by the ministers of the parliament they are fulfilled or not. Censor motion is moved by the opposition party members in the house to strongly disapprove any policy of the government. It can be moved only in the Lok Sabha. Immediately after a censor motion is passed, the government has to seek the confidence of house. So, unlike in the case of the no confidence motion, the council of ministers need not resign if the censor motion is passed. Then is cut motion. A cut motion is used to propose any demand in the financial bill which is brought by the government. Now, apart from the executive functions, the legislature has also financial functions. Now, parliament is the ultimate authority when it comes to finances. The executive cannot spend a single pie without the parliamentary approval. The legislature controls the finances of the country, it discusses and determines the government's revenues and expenditures, it lays down the principle of taxation. The union budget prepared by the cabinet is submitted for approval by the parliament. So, all proposals to impose taxes should also be approved by parliament. 
thus it authorizes the imposition of taxes and the modes of raising them. In other words, it passes the budgets and financial bills. Now, there are two standing committees like public account committee and estimate committee of the parliament. They keep a check on how the executive spend the money which is granted to it by the legislature. So, the parliament also exercises the financial functions. Then parliament has an amending power. You know, parliament of Indian Union has the power to amend the constitution of India. Both houses of parliament they have equal powers as far as amending the constitution is concerned. But amendments will have to be passed in both the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha for them to be effective. We have already discussed about uh, amendment of the constitution, how it can be done, but the power basically lies with the parliament. Uh, if we, there are other like electoral functions also, the parliament takes part in the election of president and the vice president. The president is elected by the elected member of both the houses of parliament and the elected members of the state legislatures. The vice president of India is also elected by members of both the houses of parliament. The president can be removed by a resolution passed by the Rajya Sabha agreed to by the, the Lok Sabha. Then though it is a legislative function is main, but it is in some extent it has judicial function also. Uh, the Indian parliament can also impeach the highest executive, the president or a vice president, the judges of supreme court, high court, auditor general etcetera. Now, in case of breach of privileges by the member of house, the parliament has punitive powers to punish them. A breach of privilege is when there is an infringement of any of the privileges enjoyed by the MPs. A privilege motion is moved by the members when he feels that a minister or any member has committed a breach of privilege of the house or one or more of his member by withholding the facts of a case or by giving wrong or distorted facts. So, in parliamentary system, legislative privileges and powers of the parliament to punish its members are generally not subject to judicial review. Other powers or functions of the parliament. The legislature in India controls the council of ministers by discussion, debates, deliberations and if necessary can even enforce the cabinet to resign by passing a motion of no role in a developing political consciousness or a public opinion. The parliament also functions as an organ of information. The ministers are bound to provide information in the houses when demanded by the members. In a democracy, parliament plays a vital function of deliberating matters of importance before law or resolutions are passed. Issues of national and international importance are discussed in parliament. Legislature forms different committees and commissions on different burning political, social and economic issues from time to time. The legislatures also consider the different reports which is submitted by various commissions and committees formed under the constitution. The parliament has the power to alter, decrease or increase the boundaries of states or union territories. Now let us look into brief comparison between the parliament and state legislatures. The union parliament is bicameral, the state legislature mostly unicameral, only six states have the bicameral legislature. Article 79 to 122 in part 5 of the constitution deals with the par union parliament and article 168 to 212 in part 6 of the constitution deal with state legislatures. Union parliament, if you look into the uh, powers of union parliament, if a bill is introduced in house and it passes it, then the other house can pass the bill or as it is or reject the bill altogether or pass the bill with some modifications and return it to the first house for reconsideration. Nothing is done to the bill for 6 months if, which means both houses are in disagreement. In that case, a joint sitting of both the houses is convened and made to break the constitutional deadlock. So, we can note here that in case of money bills which are to be introduced only in the Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha has restricted powers. Now, but in comparison to the state legislatures, the legislative councils they have only advisory powers by and large and have lesser powers when it comes to law making. If the bill is introduced in the legislative council which is passed by it and it goes on the legislative assembly, the assembly rejects the bill, it passes the bill with some modifications which are unacceptable to the legislative councils. So, in both the cases the bill comes to an end. However, if the bill originates in an assembly, and it is, either, it is either rejected or passed with modifications not accepted by the legislative council, it does not come to end. 
but there is no provision for joint sitting of the council and the assembly. In the cases of disagreement, the decision of the assembly is deemed final. Uh, in case of money bills, they can originate only in the legislative assembly. Uh, so far, the members of Lok Sabha of maximum is 552 in Rajya Sabha 250. However, the members in legislative assembly is between 40 and 500 and legislative council not more than one third of the members of the state legislative assemblies and cannot be under 40. Now, elections to the Rajya Sabha. Now, members are elected by elected members of the state legislative assemblies by means of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. But in case of election to the legislative councils, members are elected by five different constituencies through the process of single transferable vote system. One third of the members are elected by local authorities, representatives like gram panchayas, municipalities, block parishes, etc. One third of the members by the MLAs. One twelve of the members are elected by teachers of secondary schools, colleges, universities in the state. One twelve are elected by the graduates in the state. The remaining one six are nominated by the governor from person having experience or knowledge in the fields of science, art, literature, social service, or cooperative movement. So far, we have discussed about how the you know legislature functions in an India, and what are the powers of powers of legislation in making law or maybe it is an electoral function or maybe it is a, a judicial functions which they are organizing. Uh, judicial functions in a sense uh, that uh, we have already discussed that uh, which is there are certain things which cannot be you know privileges which cannot be questioned in the uh, by the judiciary. Uh, apart from this a uh, legislative plays very important role in you know making you know uh, gathering the opinion of the people and placing it in their uh, in the parliament and generating uh, and discussing and generating debates over that. So, we can conclude by saying that the term legislature is a generic term meaning a body or an organ of the government which formulates law. Uh, legislature enjoys a very special and important place in every democratic state in the contemporary era of democracy uh, legislature we can say is the chief source of law legislation you know could be delegated legislation also or sub delegated legislation also, but uh, we are we will not be focusing on that however, but it is a chief source of law. It is the legislature which formulates the will of the state into the laws and gives it a legal character. So, the legislature by deliberating upon matters of national importance reflects the public opinion on various issues. The executive is collectively responsible before the legislature. Legislature is the legal sovereign in the state. So, it has power to transform any decision of the state into law. Uh, we have, uh, so, we can conclude that you know legislature is a chief source of law and in any in, in Indian legal system and is very important that we should understand the uh, how the parliament functions and how uh, how the state assemblies function. Uh, since this is one of the part of the organ of the government like I have earlier also stated that there are three organs of the government legislature, executive and judiciary. So, we have already discussed about the legislature and maybe in our next videos or sessions we will be discussing about the judiciary and the functions of the executive. Thank you.